Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'm going to do the preparation problems for practice of B, as in boy, for chapter 11. So this is about the simple pendulum. I have in my hand here a wiffle ball, it's actually a pickleball. Some of you guys know I've been learning how to play pickleball. And it's really a plastic ball with lots of holes. And it's attached to a piece of string. So if I push it, pull it over here, and I let it go, this is what's called a simple pendulum. So a period, how long it makes, takes to go for one cycle could be from this spot all the way till it comes back to that spot, or this spot all the way till it comes back to that spot, or from the bottom and all the way back to the bottom. It has to go through the whole cycle. That's a period, how long it takes. And it turns out that a period can be determined just from the length of the string. It has nothing to do with the mass. No matter how heavy, this is called bob, no matter how heavy the bob is, has nothing to do with what the period will be, how long it will take. So if you look at the handout that I gave you guys the summary for this chapter, here is your equation. Pi is very useful. So the period of a bob, and here's my little bob that's going to swing back and forth and back and forth, is 2 pi times the square of the length of the string divided by little g, acceleration due to gravity. So you can take a look at this, what a simple pendulum is. All right, so let's take a look at the problem for practice B. And it is number 19 is the first one. So you guys can see that. It says, find the length of a pendulum that oscillates with a frequency of 0.16 hertz. Hopefully by now you finish those con to know the difference between period and frequency and it's just the inverse, the reciprocal. Okay, so they give you the frequency is 0.16 hertz and they wanna know what's the length. Okay, so here we go, I wrote down for us. We have the frequency is 0.16 and we wanna know what the length is. Well, I think first I wanna write down equation for period that has something to do with the length. And the equation for the period as is on your handout is two pi times the square root of the length all over little g. I know that that handout uses capital L. I'm used to doing um, cursive lowercase l. So just be consistent. And so there, there it is. I can figure out if I know what the period is. Well, do I know what the period? Well, the frequency is the same thing as one over the period. So the period must be one over the frequency. So that would be one over 0 0.16, which is 1600, so 100 divided by 16. So let's see what that is. I'm gonna take 0 0.16, that's the Hertz, let me clear it. 0 0.16, and I'm gonna do the inverse. Remember my little inverse button right here? Inverse, there we go, give that to me. And there we go, we have 6.25. So it's saying it's taking 6.25 seconds for this bob to go, let's say from here, I pull it all the way out and it goes all the way to this side and then it comes back. So going all in this direction and then in this direction, it takes 6.25 seconds. And just to prove to you guys that this inverse is the same thing, I'm gonna go one divided by 0.16, 6.25. Okay, I think it's faster, just press the reciprocal button. Okay, so now I have the period. And I know G is 9.81. So we get to do a little algebra, just a little algebra to figure out the L. So as you've done before, we're gonna divide both sides by two pi. So divide both sides by two pi. Now my two pi is cancel out here. And I get, that's tau, tau is the period. Big T, tau is the period. Write that down, that's the period. Tau over two pi is equal to the square root of L over G. Okay, still need the L and it's inside that square root sign, so I gotta square both sides. So let's just square both sides. That'll make the square root go away. So I have tau squared all over two pi squared. Well, what is that? Two pi times two pi. Oh, that's four pi squared. Okay, 
4 pi squared. I didn't want to put that in parentheses. Go ahead. That's 4 pi squared. And that's equal to L over little g. Okay, so I'm almost there. So now I want to isolate the L. I'll multiply g to both sides. Multiply g. Now my g's cancel out. So I'm left with L is equal to little g times the period squared all over 4 pi squared. There we go. Now they told us that the period was, well, they didn't tell us. They gave us the frequency and we took the inverse and we figured it's 6.25 seconds. So I'm going to go 9.81 meters per second squared times 6.25 seconds. And I have to square that. So my second squared here cancels out with my second squared there. And all that divided by five, 4 pi squared. All right. So I want to make sure you remember to square it. So I'm going to say squared. There we go. 6.25 squared. All right, times 9.81. And I want to divide it by, not by 4, but divide it by 4 pi squared. So I have to put that in parentheses. Go ahead and try it without the parentheses. You won't get the same answer. So I get 9.706648. Meters, right? Because my second squares cancel out. So that is about 9.7 meters. So that's pretty long. Your meter sticks, it's almost 10 of them, right? 9.7, almost, almost 10. If you have it that long, that's going to take six and a quarter seconds to make a full cycle from one end back or from the middle all the way back again, the whole cycle. All right, so that's number 19. Let's look at number 20. I'm going to flip this over. I'm getting to decide. Number 20. All right, 20 talks about a pendulum that moves through its equilibrium position once every 1.000 sec uh, seconds. The point is, we have how many? Four significant figures here. Second is sometimes called a seconds pendulum. What's the period of a seconds pendulum? So they want you to think about what this means. The one, one second for the every time it passes its equilibrium point. Okay, so I'm going to draw here for you. Here is my pendulum. There's the bob. Okay, and so let's say it goes all the way out here. I'm going to hold it up to right there. And then it swings back to this position. So in order for it to be passing this every second, okay, every second, that means I have, let's see, I'm going to have half a second here. Half a second here goes up, then it's going to go down half a second. Okay, we're here. Took one second to get there. Then it's going to take half a second to get up here, and then back down here half a second. So one whole period, you can take it anywhere. Let's say from here. From here, I'm going to start right at the very end, see if that's easier to look at. We got half a second here, half a second, that's one second, half a second, half a second, two seconds. So from there, I see that the period is 2.000 seconds, okay? If I took it from here, it was half a second up, half a second down, half a second the other side, half a second down, it was two seconds also. Or from here, half, half, that's one, half, half, that's two, all right. So that's what is a seconds pendulum, where the period is actually two seconds. Okay, let's read the next part. Next part says, in Cambridge, England, the seconds pendulum is certain length, 0.9942 meters long. What is the free fall acceleration in Cambridge? Hmm, so what is little g exactly in Cambridge, England? Okay, so they gave us the length, let me see right here, the length, this is part B, part B. The length is 0.9942, so we still have four significant figures, meters. So they're saying, what's little g? What's little g? So let's write down the equation again now. We have the period that we used in the earlier problem. Two pi times, what is it? The g, L, I'm sorry, the length, all over acceleration due to gravity. You could, you could say acceleration due to gravity or little g. I want to solve for little g. 
So before we played around the algebra to solve for L, this time we're going to solve for G. Okay, same thing. Let's I'm move the paper over. Let's divide both sides by 2 pi. Divide by 2 pi. Now these cancel out. So I end up with 2 pi, oh, I'm sorry, period, tau, over 2 pi is equal to the square root of L over G. I need to square both sides again to get rid of the square root side because that way I can have G by itself. All right, so now I have tau squared over, like before, 2 pi times 2 pi. 4 pi squared is equal to the length over little g. Okay, now we need to solve for g. Hmm, how are we going to do that? Well, let's see. If I multiply g to both sides, I'll have it on this side. Now it's upstairs. That's one way. Okay. But now I got all of this stuff here next to it. So why don't I multiply the reciprocal? So let's multiply that by 4 pi squared all over tau squared. Over here too, 4 pi squared all over tau squared. <laughs> okay, now I've canceled out here and I'm left with little g is L, the length, times 4 pi squared all over the period squared. Okay, the period squared. And we already know that the period is two seconds from above because it's a seconds, look at the problem here a seconds pendulum. So we know a seconds pendulum has to be period is 2.000 seconds. Okay, so we know here that the period, let me put it like this. We know that the period is two seconds and we know what the length is. So let's plug that in. I got the length is 0 0.9942, 9942 meters. And then I'm going to multiply that by 4 pi squared all over. Here's my seconds. So the period is 2. So I need to square that. I'll have 4 seconds squared. And notice my units, meters per second squared, which is correct for the acceleration to gravity, acceleration. OK, let's see what that is. Make clear. All right. Point. 9942 times 4 pi squared. Okay, divided by, this is legal, 4. And what do I get? I get 9.81. That sound familiar? 9.812. Oh, yeah, we had to give them four significant figures. 9.81236, etc. So we got. 9.82 and 812 meters per second squared. So there you have it for Cambridge. So see, there is going to be slight differences where on the planet you are, what your acceleration due to gravity is. Okay, and the next problem was the same thing, but the length is a little shorter. In Tokyo, it's 0.9927 meters long. So we're going to find out what G is. So it's going to be the same same as we did here, but instead, I'll highlight, we're going to change the length. We're going to change the length, and instead, we want, what was the length? 0.9927, 9927 right here. So instead, we're going to change this to 0.9927 in Tokyo. This is Tokyo. All right, so let's figure out what that is. So yes, you would have to write it all out. Now, remember, I do require you guys to show me this derivation. But if there's another problem, no, you don't have to do it again. You can just say, okay, but for Tokyo, G is, and et cetera. Okay, so let's use our calculator here now. I have 0 0.9927, I keep checking, is that right? Yeah, all right, 0 0.9927 times four pi squared divided by the period which was four, and now I get 9.7975. So for Tokyo, this is Tokyo. The little g, put it right here. Little g is 9.797556. And I need four, uh, four decimal places, is that right? So it would still be 9.79, oh, it'd be eight, huh? So that would be 9.798 meters per second squared. 
All right, so this was just working with the same formula of period equal to two pi times the square root of L over G, except this time we were solving for lowercase g acceleration due to gravity. Okay, next time I'll be doing the video for practice C. All right, let's see. All right, see you next time. We can figure out if I can't. All right, bye-bye.